From groundbreaking civil engineering in the pursuit of densification to a sea change in parameter strategy, what a year 3UK has had in 2021. Perhaps most outwardly visible have been the hundreds of 5G phase 8 unilateral poles 3 have been deploying around the country. Primarily, these have been entirely new locations. However, some of them have been in place upgrades like the pole behind me here. These poles of wonder are a key facet of 3's gigabit vision of deploying high speed connectivity both to mobiles as well as households. However, getting these poles into the ground is anything but straightforward and a substantial engineering effort is going on to get the thousands deployed that 3 aspires to have. To date, this has included over 3,000 planning applications which I have tracked and then followed up, as well as large amounts of contractor and subcontractor activity. The difficulty is that councils are very mixed in their views around these polls, with some councils rejecting nearly all of the polls and others proving pretty much all of them in the reverse case. However, even when councils approve the applications, there can still be difficulties getting these installed, whether it be utilities that are not expected or other local issues that come with trying to deploy a large amount of street infrastructure in busy urban locations. Most crucially though, these poles are coming and they're coming in their droves, bringing the phenomenal over a gigabit 5G performance where good backhaul exists as well as flagship 4G to hundreds of local areas. Hopefully in the coming months and years, thousands. Three's upgrades haven't just been limited to these street pole deployments however. They have also been adding 5G to more and more conventional structures, including to ones in the middle of nowhere, like the site behind me here. This site is in fact broadcasting with 100 megahertz of NR bandwidth, providing an ENDC throughput of about two to 300 megabits per second. Now, some people will be wondering why it's broadcasting at 100 megahertz rather than the 40 megahertz that you used to typically see on lower backhaul sites. The answer is that three are increasing NR bandwidth on backhaul constrained sites, largely from 40 megahertz all the way up to 100 megahertz, although I have seen other variants like 60 megahertz while out and about. There are many good reasons for doing this both in terms of download performance as well as upload. Let's imagine a site which has 200 megabits of symmetric backhaul for the NR component. We have a user in poor RF conditions who is achieving on average one megabit per megahertz per second on the downlink direction and therefore with 40 megahertz they get 40 megabits per second assuming all things being equal with 100 megahertz they would then get 100 megabits per second which is obviously a significant jump for uplink the nr carrier is so highly dimensioned towards download that backhaul is unlikely to ever be the limiting factor in uplink performance rather the NR carrier bandwidth and the respective dimensioning. Therefore, increasing from 40 megahertz to 100 megahertz will inevitably lead to substantial increase in upload, both in good conditions as well as poor ones in all but the most backhaul constrained environments. A little closer to home now, and right behind me is a phase seven where three have Ericsson as their vendor. And notably with these three Ericsson deployments, 700 megahertz comes as standard. The 700 megahertz being spectrum that the operator acquired in the auctions earlier this year. The two by 10 megahertz provide a significant improvement to low band 4G and means 
that in some areas with a reasonable amount of Ericsson equipment, the parameters are rather different, such that the low band 4G has a higher reselection priority than 3G, which is entirely new for 3, who's typically kept, for example, LOA as the lowest priority layer. These new reselection priorities improve time on 4G as well as lead to an improved customer experience in the cell edge. Three's parameter changes are not just limited to the cell reselection priorities though. One thing we were very pleased about was the change of filter coefficient RSRQ from FC6 to FC8 in Huawei and Samsung zones, which enables more smoothing of RSRQ and a better handover experience. Now there are all the key topics from 2021 that I wanted to talk about. Just looking forward to 2022 and what we are most looking forward to. I think the thing on most people's minds is NRCA. In other words, getting 140 megahertz of N78 bandwidth through the aggregation of 340 megahertz block and their 100 megahertz block. Given device support for NRCA is increasing and the constant wish to have higher speeds, I suspect we'll be seeing that very imminently. Additionally, 3 may choose to have a play with their 700 megahertz configuration. We may see DSS, we may see NR, who knows. But thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.